The CIA is trying to have a coup in Venezuela. I haven't been watching since I've been here, so they might be doing it right now. And we should all be putting our voices out to stop the U.S. from having regime change for oil in Venezuela. Obviously, the CIA, every time they have targeted a country for regime change, they tell you the same things. They tell you the same things in Iraq. They tell you the same things that they did in Chile in 1973. And they always said, oh, they lost support. Oh, they're dictators. The people want them out. We're just helping people. Come on. Everybody knows that's not true. And right now, under the guise of humanitarian aid, they're doing the same thing that the U.S. did in Guatemala in the 80s, which was sneak guns to right-wing forces in Central America through what they call humanitarian aid. Now, the people of Venezuela are the ones that should be deciding who rules them. The U.S. has been working with opposition forces there for years and has been admitting that. We must do everything we can to keep U.S. hands off Venezuela. You can find these links in the video description, or you can click here or at the end of this video. This is UN expert Alfred Desaius, who visited Venezuela with a mandate to gather information about regional cooperation on trade, good governance, social protection, and human rights. He then wrote a report based on his investigation and formally presented it to the Human Rights Council. This is the petition asking U.S. news media to interview human rights expert Alfred Desaius about Venezuela. Most Americans have been kept in the dark about what he reported to the Human Rights Council because U.S. mainstream media has been neglecting to interview him. Unfortunately, at no time since I returned from Venezuela and since my report was officially presented to the Human Rights Council, have I been approached by any of the mainstream media who actually have a responsibility to inform? If you get a chance to listen to what he has said in interviews with media outside of the United States or in interviews with alternative media within the United States, it's clear why the mainstream media doesn't want to interview him. What about the role of the media in what is happening right now in Venezuela? You would have no idea if you watch the networks in the United States. I'm not just talking about Fox. I'm talking about CNN and MSNBC. If you watch in any regular way oh, I know, what is unfolding, the level of involvement of the United States, right through to this video that Vice President Pence posted right before Juan Guaido announced from the street that he was the president, the head of the National Assembly, the Nancy Pelosi equivalent. Well, the mainstream media has been complicit in this attempted coup. The mainstream media has prepared through a conundrum of fake news an atmosphere that the public should accept this regime change imposed by the United States on the people of Venezuela, because ultimately it's supposed to be for the good of the Venezuelans. Now, this reminds us of the run-up to the Iraq invasion of 2003. Now, the mainstream media supported all the lies, all the manipulations of George W. Bush and of Tony Blair to convince the world that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. And on this excuse, it was made somewhat palatable to world public opinion that you would enter Iraq and change the government by force. The War Made Easy movie also highlights the fact that mainstream media supported the lies to such a degree that they canceled Phil Donahue's show because he questioned the lies being told. Despite being the highest rated program on MSNBC, Donahue's show was abruptly canceled by the network just three weeks before the start of the war. Phil Donahue was an anti-war voice on MSNBC, one of the cable news channels. And a memo that was leaked as the Donahue show was canceled is very explicit. It said, we don't want this to be a face of NBC as the United States goes into war. This guy puts anti-war voices on our network. The American people need to know there is no just cause for this war. But in, uh, there's no evidence that there is even a weapon that exists in that country yet. The mainstream media used lies and omissions to sell the Iraq war, and now they're doing the same thing to sell a coup against Venezuela.
And that's why I'm asking you to take action and sign the petition. And don't forget, subscribe to Representative Press. It's quite fascinating to call something a dictatorship that has free and fair elections. I mean, it's so absolutely absurd what is going on. We're talking about a country that has elections every year. The fact is, Venezuela's voting system has more checks and verifications than most countries. A system of voter cards, fingerprints, and more make fraud near impossible. Every vote can be audited and verified, as they often are. Their elections are also heavily monitored by independent international observers. The elections were verified by four different international organizations, with observers from over a dozen countries. One of those observers is the former Spanish Prime Minister José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero, who said, I do not have any doubt about the voting process. It is an advanced, automated voting system. Maduro won with 6.2 million votes which is 31% of eligible voters. This is the same percentage Barack Obama won in the 2008 election. Now listen to Claire Daly. I'm going to add new points and context to this. And she mentions Alfred Desaius because his findings are important and relevant. I think that we can both agree that the situation in Venezuela is a very difficult one. The economy is in crisis. The people are divided. And while the Taoiseach believes the Donald Trump narrative that this is because of a failure of socialism, I'm personally more inclined to believe the UN Special Rapporteur Alfred Desaius, who made an extended visit to Venezuela late last year and is in fact an international law expert. And he blames the illegal US sanctions, which he says have caused many deaths, have directly and indirectly aggravated the shortage of medicines, including insulin, are crimes against humanity which should be referred to the International Criminal Court. Strong words from a renowned expert. But, you know, even if we don't agree on the causes of the problems, I'm sure you would agree that Venezuela is not the only divided country with economic problems. But it is the only one where there is an unelected, self-proclaimed president who has been recognised as a head of state without any basis in law, including by Ireland. It is the only one where the US military are presently circling and landing, we believe, in the Dominican Republic, in Puerto Rico and in Colombia under the guise of delivering humanitarian aid. In a situation that is eerily like the weapons of mass destruction lie that was used to sell the Iraq war. On a continent where humanitarian aid has been used as a cover for death squads by the same Elliot Abrams who is now at the head of the US operation in Venezuela. Tarnished, this is an incredibly serious situation. You don't need to be a genius to work out that the humanitarian aid narrative is just a Trojan horse. Even the official organisations, the International Red Cross and the UN, want nothing to do with it. It's not aid, it's a provocation, it's a cover for military intervention and regime change. So the question for us is, are we going to go along with the herd, say nothing, wring our hands afterwards and say, oh, if only we'd known? Or are we going to speak out now and add our voices to those opposing military aggression and intervention for respecting the sovereignty of Venezuela and to assist them in resolving their differences through dialogue and respect for international law? Surely that's what a neutral country should be doing. Anything less is a facilitation of the latest resource war. We know Venezuela has the largest oil resources in the world. We know because Trump and Bolton have told us that they're in discussions with American oil companies to take the oil of the Venezuelan people. We know they've wanted that for a long time. The president's remarks to the room were along the lines of, I don't understand why we're not looking at Venezuela. Why are we not at war with Venezuela? They have all the oil and they're right on our back door. We know they tried to overthrow Chavez. We know the sanctions followed that up. But this is a turning point. And we know, Tanishta, what happens next. Look at Libya. Look at Iraq. Look at Syria. Donald Trump says... Nicaragua and Cuba are next. The days of socialism and communism are numbered not only in Venezuela, but in Nicaragua and in Cuba as well. The United States was proud to be the first nation in the world to recognize President Guaido. And by the way, John Bolton is here. Where is John? 
working hard. Please, are we going to stay silent or are we going to speak out against US military aggression and intervention and in defence of international law? The Carter Centre and others have recognised that the elections in Venezuela were democratic, but there's a certain irony in people being concerned about the elections in Venezuela, but they've no problems whatsoever with actual dictators in place like Egypt or uh, Saudi Arabia. This is not about democracy, and you didn't in any way address the points I made, that the situation has moved on. Since the backing of Guaido, following on from the US, the situation has changed on the ground. There are troops amassing on the borders of Venezuela under the guise of humanitarian aid. Now, this is a country that needs humanitarian aid. This is a young girl, a 12-year-old Yemenese girl who's starving. She weighs 22 pounds. There needs to be a humanitarian intervention in Yemen, but there can't be because the Americans are blocking the Saudis. Now, I'm not arguing for a military intervention into Saudi Arabia. What I am arguing for is the respect of international law. And in a very short space of time, we will be in a situation where the fate of peoples, not just in Venezuela, but in Nicaragua and in Cuba and throughout Latin America, will be seriously undermined in what is a resource war. And Tanisht, I haven't heard you saying anything about that. The situation has moved on and it's getting incredibly dangerous. Let's get this message out to as many people as you can. Share this video. Post the link on Facebook, on Twitter, and any other social media you can think of, and email it out to others. And check out these videos for more context about this situation. And to boost this platform, please subscribe and click the bell. We can do this. We can prevent a war.